We got breaking news for you. Three more deaths have been confirmed as a result of those raging wildfires in eastern Tennessee, bringing the death toll now to 10. The wildfires, which injured nearly 100 others, are the state's largest in nearly 100 years. Joining me now, Congressman Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. Uh, I, I, it's a real difficult time, obviously, for you, so I appreciate you coming on with us. And just want to ask you how the folks are doing in Tennessee. How are they dealing with this? Uh, because this is one tragedy uh, that no one was prepared for, I could see. You're exactly right. It is absolutely horrific. And the first responders are doing a fabulous job. The churches are reaching out. Uh, the stories, Charles, are just so tender of neighbors coming to help those that are so displaced, even people that have lost their homes, going to those that have lost their loved ones, and uh, trying to provide aid and comfort, but just a tragic, tragic situation. I know everyone's still dealing with the tragedy and the loss of life, and but ultimately, uh, there's a lot of curiosity about how these started, even some suspicions yes. about it. So I'm not, I'm not sure if you wouldn't want to go there just yet, but it's something that the public is eager to hear about at some point. They will be eager to hear, and that is a story that the TBI and FBI and the local law enforcement will certainly be able to tell. But I think at this point, we focus on tending to those that have been adversely impacted and then wait for law enforcement to tell their story. All right, I want to shift gears here a little bit because uh, sure. the Trump transition team, uh, it, it's, it's the news, right? Every night we talk about it, and uh, uh, you're, you're the vice chair of, the, of that team. So swirling speculation. I, I, first, I want to start with the Secretary of State. I know that you're loathe or reluctant to say who you like the most, but I think the big question here, the big debate, is if, if Donald Trump goes with uh, a Mitt Romney, who clearly... Sabotage them. You know, he just, he, he was really just a, more, more of an enemy right. than even a, a regular foe yeah. during the campaign, rather than a loyalist like a Rudy Giuliani. There would be such an uproar amongst these voters who are out there right now ready to give him this victory slash thank you tour. Is that something the team is discussing? I, I think that what we know is that Mr. Trump is going to choose whomever he thinks is going to best fit in with the rest of the national security team. And <clears throat> he is, <clears throat> pardon me, he is focused on having a cabinet that is going to get the job done. And he is certainly wanting to make, be sure that national security is at the top of that sure. heap. And he is going to get whomever he thinks has that best understanding of the Middle East and what's happening there, the impact that UK extracting themselves from the EU has on Europe, looking at the ASEAN nations. And I can't tell you who I think that is well, going to be. With all due respect, I though, I, I, yeah. we're, we're talking about all these candidates are qualified for the most part. Yes. And, and, I, and I guess the, 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 the uh, you know, we've heard Kellyanne Conway come out, we've heard Newt Gingrich come out. There's some serious vocal opposition to uh, Mitt Romney. That's so right. I was just wondering how much do you guys talk about that uh, as, as you're pondering and, and Donald Trump is pondering who's going to get this job? I get more uh, pushback and more comments from constituents and colleagues and more opinions than I do from uh, working with them, working with the transition team. I think everyone is very respectful of providing Mr. Trump the opportunity to make his decision, and he'll make a good one. Uh, Representative Blackburn, now there's some criticism starting to bubble up here a little bit. I know there are a lot of uh, positions to be filled, but a lack of diversity. Uh, obviously, a lot of women have already been chosen. Uh, we've heard Linda McMahon's name floating, Sarah Palin's name yes. floating. But, and I'm also hearing from the Trump camp diversity of ideas as a theme rather than diversity based on gender and race. But is that something that, that the, that the in, internal workings of the camp are thinking about at all? Because it is starting to grow. You knew it was inevitable, by the way. You had to. Of course. Of course, it is something that is inevitable. But I can tell you, there are so many qualified women that are coming forward. And you're going to see racial diversity, gender diversity. You're going to see that diversity of ideas that will provide for robust discussion and uh, great opportunities to 
throw ideas on the table, brainstorm out loud, and decide what is going to be the best, most cost-effective, uh, most efficient uh, method to change the federal government. People have weighed in. Yeah. And they want something done about the size, the scope, and the cost of the federal government. And uh, Donald Trump is going to deliver on that. Well, I got to tell you, uh, you know, Mike Pence was a heck of a pick for VP. You were my favorite, yeah. though. And uh, I think I, I think <laughs> I think you're doing a wonderful job. And uh, I know you don't necessarily need a, an, another job, but I, I hope that Donald Trump keeps you by his side one way or another throughout this whole process. You're one heck of a diplomat, and we appreciate you coming on the show tonight. And I love being on your show. And thank you so much. And Merry Christmas. Thank Today's you very much. Mer 1st. Merry Christmas to you as well.